meet in the name of the living God, creator, redeemer and sustainer. And it is so good to welcome all of you to our sofa service, whether you're watching us at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning on your sofa, however you're accessing this service. We're so encouraged that you're there and we're so encouraged also by the feedback that you give. Do feel you can contact us and let us know how you're receiving uh, this opportunity to join together in worship. And it's particularly great too, and we're very blessed when you've actually invited someone to join in with the sofa service. Mm. So all of you out there who are watching because of someone else's invitation, well, that's the heart of our Christian living, isn't it? Responding to God's invitation of love, love made real in and through the person of Jesus Christ. It's wonderful. I keep having people say to me, see you on Sunday, and I, <laughs> I have to think, oh, am I seeing you on Sunday? And I panic and think I've forgotten an invitation or something. And, and I realise it's because they're watching this and uh, it's very lovely to know that we have this yeah. time to join together as a community. Our colleague today, uh, it's a wonderful colleague, the colleague for the second Sunday in the season of Trinity, the season of the Kingdom and it speaks of that love. So let's pray. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As we begin to look to what the easing of lockdown might mean, we're hoping to begin to open our churches for private prayer next Sunday. We've been told we can hold funerals in church, limited numbers. I have my first the week after next. It's time to think about what it means to move beyond this time of lockdown. I had a great phrase, uh, I think it's being used in the world of business and commerce, uh, build back better, build back better. And it's uh, a phrase I reflected on uh, when I wrote this week's newsletter. I don't know for you, Jane, it, uh, it touched a nerve and you wanted to, to respond <laughs> to it. So yes. uh, let's, uh, let's yes. hear what you have to say about building back better and, and especially what it means for us as as a church yeah just been reflecting on the steps we can all take on a very personal level to help us as a community with our our building back um we've had two songs today uh the first one leave me lord is uh, a desire in the song to be led and for god to lead us and the song we'll end with today is called waymaker again about looking for the way, looking for the way through. What does God want for us? One of the most moving images I have seen over the last week was that of a black man in London last week um, who was there to stand for the Black Lives Matter community, carrying a white man who was there to stand for right-wing views that do not care about racism. They were there to make their protest. And um, the image is of the black man carrying the white man who had become injured and was in danger and in trouble and he just picked him up and he carried him. I was so struck by the image, not just because the black man was carrying the white man, but because the white man let himself be carried. 
And I thought the two-way link that went on in that image was very moving. And in that moment, they cut through their, their differences to a common humanity. They, they suddenly saw each other's stories as, as that of equals, of, of people who could be in a moment together, almost of salvation. Matthew 22, God says to us through Jesus, the two greatest commandments are that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbour as yourself. That new commandment we are given in Jesus is our way maker, is, is our step forward. But how do we do it? How do we, in our daily lived lives, keep tuning in to that commandment? Well, I've got three simple steps. The three L's. Love, learn, live. Love is in the context of our spiritual lives when we connect to God in the fullest and most heartfelt and most real way. And we do that through worship. Now, worship's an interesting word. Um, it's a word I really struggle with, to be honest, because it, it makes me feel that like I'm not in control and so I'm bowing down to something. And uh, Jonathan's probably grimacing slightly as I say that I don't really like the word worship because it makes me feel like I have to kind of do what I tell, I'm told because Jonathan will say to anyone who knows me, one of my issues <laughs> in life and relationships is I don't like being told what to do. But worship is something so much more than being told how to do something. Worship is our connectivity to God. It's the moment when we express our love for God and he can express his unconditional love for us. When we worship together as a community, we open ourselves up to that love. We're helped by music, we're helped by prayer. We're helped by the environment we're in. We're helped by people. But wherever the help is coming from, the end product is still the same. That we need daily in our lives to connect to God's love. It is so immense and so beautiful. And when you feel that connection, it burns in your heart. It's the most incredible experience. And the first L of our journey into building be that better is that of love, of connecting as much as we can daily to God and living in the lived presence of his love. Of course, we have to be very careful with worship. I heard a talk last weekend that said that worship without mission is self-indulgent. Somehow, Maybe many of us previous to the virus were locked into a little of that self-indulgence. We were locked into our buildings. Maybe the virus has drawn us out into the community to give us a different way of looking at how we move in faith. The next L is learn. Learning day in and day out from each other and listening. When John and I did a, a marriage course um, four or five years ago, yeah. I can't even remember, um, we were a bit sort of, well, we don't need this, we don't need to go on this course, you know, we're okay, we're doing fine, we're working well, things out. I thought you out. did. <laughs> 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 anyway, um, the marriage course was very good and very insightful and you have these different exercises to go through and one of them is how you listen to your partner. And what became clear through the process of doing these activities for Jonathan and I was that listening is actually a really hard thing to do. And I would say for myself, I find it hard sometimes to stop and listen to people. But if you don't listen, you can't learn. And if you're to learn about your friends, your family, your community, we all have to listen. I watched the HTV service 
this week and Nikki Gumbel was talking to a lady called Dr Mo Akindole. She's a doctor at one of the London hospitals. She shared with him that of the people who have died from coronavirus, 94% of them have been either black or from a minority ethnic community. And one of the striking things about what she was saying to Nikki about her lived experience was that she was in this moment so grateful that a white vicar from a Church of England church in Kensington was standing up and saying, I want to listen, I want to learn. We need to find out more about what is actually happening here. It was very moving the way she thanked him for being prepared to listen to her and to others. And the reason he's listening is he wants to learn. And the reason we all need to listen is because learning is integral to us living our shared experiences and understanding each other. Michelle Obama said in a documentary, real stories break down barriers. And when we listen and learn the real stories of those around us, it is transformational. The last L is live. Live is really a combination of love and learn. It's live with those two things in tandem. Our buildings have closed and it forced us to look out, but not just out to the church community, out beyond the church community, out to everyone who lives in this place, in the Manhood Peninsula and beyond. And one of the really heartwarming things that happened so quickly was that we set up the Helping Hands Hub, that you as a community were saying, what can I do to help? What's needed? We heard in our meditation on Wednesday about Yvonne, Canon Yvonne's vision for us to be a church who have a particular care for the bereaved and that through the work with the charity At A Loss we can be part of a community who come alongside people who are grieving. Again, it is about looking out, looking out, looking out, not just at our village but at all the villages here all the church buildings. One of the things that has become so clear to Jonathan and I through the sofa services, through the helping hands, through talking in the weekly meditations to people in a way that we have never talked with people before, our clergy talking in a really heartfelt way about things that really matter to them, is that something has been unlocked in the community that suddenly an awareness of ourselves as a people, as the people of the peninsula, not just West Wittering, not just Burden and Itchener, has done something really special. And I think we're hoping that as we move out of lockdown, that all of us look not to a building, but to each other. Because when we look to each other, we will be living and witnessing to the needs of our community as a whole. I know we have much to learn. And I know every single one of you there is here watching this today because you need to feel loved. And you need to hear the message that God loves you with all his heart and all his soul. And all he wants for us is to know that love, to be able to love back, to love God and to love our neighbour. Building back better as British Petroleum, the people who think about what songs we sing when we watch a rugby match, in our schools, in our churches, the cathedral is itself going through a momentous review at the moment 
about what will matter and how will they build back better after lockdown. We're part of a movement of change, but I truly believe it is a change for the better and that we will all be inspired by God's love as we move forwards. Jane, thank you for that powerful reflection. I too was struck by that, that image of, of two people who were so opposed, uh, finding themselves thrown together and, and in one allowing himself to be carried and one carrying him. It was such a, a powerful message that cut through so much of all the conflict around that Black Lives Matter movement. Our awareness of, of that issue and indeed the times in which we live have for all of us, I think, sharpened our perspective on what it means to live faith in lockdown, what our Christian witness should be, whether we might be on the left of politics or the right of politics, whether we're high up the candle or low down the candle, you know, when it is real, like it's been with the pandemic, like it is when we confront the reality of the racism in our society, uh, we rely, I think, so much on, on the wisdom of Scripture. I know for me that, you know, when things get real, Scripture really becomes alive. And throughout the social services, we've tried to be faithful to the gospel message Sunday by Sunday. Today, though, was one of those I thought, oh, if only I could have something else to read. It follows on, reflecting on what it means to respond to the call of Jesus, follow me. It's a, a passage that's full of what are known as hard sayings. I'm actually not going to read the whole gospel passage as set, just a part toward the end, because this part alone is hard enough. It comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 10, before Gospel reading 24 to 39, I'm reading from 34 to 39. I think especially today, this requires a very particular quality of listening to echo what Jane has said. If we are to be those who learn, disciples of that love which is of God and which Jesus came to reveal to us. But sometimes in ways that are deeply challenging. Jesus said, Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. It's hard not to be startled by some of those images, mm. particularly as a church which celebrates those relationships that Jesus seems to be quite literally threatening with his word. 
what it means to follow Jesus clearly means that there will be some hard choices in life. Some of those involving our closest relationships. To live a life that is like the life of Jesus is going to mean that things will have to change. We need to pray for a generous and for a strong spirit as we go through those times of change, as the things that matter are most important to us, come under closer scrutiny as we walk the way of Jesus Christ, as we follow him. But I don't read those passages as abandoning those relationships that we all know to be so fundamental to our human being, our, our sense of fulfilment in life. When we reflect on the word lose, those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. I think we need to understand lose in a biblical sense, in a scriptural sense. It, it doesn't mean the end of your life, just as I don't think Jesus is calling for the end of those relationships that are so precious to us. Rather, it's a re-evaluation a reappropriation. It's about making sure that we have our priorities right, that we have relationships where those values that we hold most dear are what's most important so that we can have better relationships. To lose, in a sense, then means to put down to lay aside, to give up. In a time of pandemic, we've been challenged, have we not, to reflect on what are those things that we've had to put down, to set aside, to give up on. Only in life when we go through that process, will we be able then to discover what else there is, what more there is? We have to go through the losing process first so that we can discover, we can find that true life, that fullness of life. Jane talks about build back better. We have to have gone through that process of loss. Gone through it well and in a supported way, yes. We don't want to abandon people to that sense of loss. But it is something we must continue to hold on to, because then we can think about moving forward. I'm going to leave these things where they are. I'm not going to pick them up again, because I found something else which is more important, which is more of the way of Jesus. I want to hold on to that instead. And as I build back better, I want that to be the thing that I bring with me into this new normal. These are hard sayings. We need to pray for grace to know how we are to lose our life, that we may find that fullness of life in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Jesus, show us the way. 
grant to us, generous and strong spirit, that we may know how to follow you, how to make you a priority in all of our lives. Help us to set aside and to lay down that which gets in the way, that which distracts us, that which we get caught up in. That which locks us in to ways of living, to ways of trying to follow you, but take us nowhere. And we pray that all those who are part of our churches near and far, as they begin to open up their buildings, may see that as just another way. but not the only way to live out our faith and our belief in a God of love. We continue to pray for those who lead us. We pray for Archbishop Justin, for Bishop Martin, we pray for our government, especially as they have to make that difficult decision of just how far we can ease lockdown. Grant to them that same generous and strong spirit. Put courage in their hearts and give to them a renewed vision of how we may as a nation and as a church build back better. We continue to lay before your healing presence any who are sick or in need, all those who continue to suffer with COVID-19, those who are grieving the death of loved ones from that disease. We bring before you those who have asked us to pray for them, for Clive and Derek, for Judith and Judy, for Margaret and for Prue. And a moment's quiet, we name in the silence of our hearts those known to us who in their need call upon our prayers. And finally, we thank you for all our many blessings. And above all, the blessing to come together in prayer and in praise to worship you, the one true living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And we draw all our prayers together and offer them to you in the words that Jesus gave to us as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Well, our final song today kind of draws everything we've been saying together in one song. It's from uh, an evangelical university in the States. Our first song was from the Anglo-Catholic movement in our church. And I have two songs in this this morning that are from different places within our church community. But as with the photo of the black man carrying the white man, there are just moments and places where all of us, we just come through and come together into God's presence. And our common humanity becomes the thing that is the most important. It's a song where it uses the word worship several times. And uh, I'd like you, as you listen to it, to think of worship as just connecting to God's love. It is such a beautiful thing. So this song is called The Waymaker. And uh, just get the volume up. And we'll play it to you as we leave today.
I would.